So I think it's fair to say that even though there's a claim out there that the conflict in Palestine has been going on for hundreds of thousands of years, and even though people say it is a very, very complicated and protracted conflict, if we want to pinpoint, pinpoint the reasons for the reasons, the reasons there is a conflict in Palestine, then we need to look no farther than racism and colonialism that came from Europe. That is the source of the trouble of the problem in Palestine. Not only Palestine, but certainly Palestine. And I'm sure, I'm sure that many of you, if not all, have heard of the Balfour Declaration. Now, growing up as an Israeli, you would think that the Balfour Declaration is one of the Ten Commandments. That it came down the mountain with Moses, and that Balfour was some kind of, an, of a prophet or a saint. Every city, almost every city in Israel, has a Balfour Street, or a Balfour Plaza. And growing up, you think that Balfour was, you know, at least a prophet, maybe a king, a Jewish king. <laughs> and what is the Balfour Declaration? Lord Balfour, who was the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain, promising a Jewish millionaire by the name of Rothschild, Palestine for the Jewish people. In other words, one white European racist offering another white European racist the country that belongs to somebody else. Neither one of them had anything to do with Palestine. But of course, these were days where it was okay, it was completely acceptable for white Europeans to take the country of non-Europeans and do with it as they will. Of course, this is still going on in many, in many places. So that's the Balfour Declaration. Now, several decades later, we had the United Nations intervene and come up with the partition plan of Palestine. And this is the map they came up with. And uh, today we walked around Amsterdam a little bit and we saw those, uh, what are they called, the bulldog coffee shops. And when we look at this map, when I look at this map, I get a sense that whoever drew the map must have been sitting in one of these coffee shops when they were drawing this map. First of all, when you look at the map, it's absurd. The boundaries are absurd. There's nothing there that is actually practical. But that's just one aspect of the madness. The other aspect of the madness, which really convinces me that they must have been high or drunk when they, when they drew this map and when they came up with this plan, is the following. In 1947, the entire Jewish community in Palestine numbered about half a million people. This was, these were the people who, like my grandparents, came from Eastern Europe to colonize Palestine, to immigrate to Palestine, if you want to call it that. And then my parents' generation, who were born there, first generation Israelis, if you will. That's it. It was a community that had practically just come out off the boat. The Palestinian, native Palestinian Arab community was about three times larger. Yet the partition plan, or in, this, in the partition plan, they allocate the larger portion of the country to the smaller Jewish community. And the local Palestinian native community was supposed to be satisfied with a smaller portion of the land. And this was somehow supposed to work. Even today people say, you know, it's all the Palestinians' fault, this whole conflict, because they rejected the partition plan. Of course, who would not reject a, a, such a mad idea, such crazy, a crazy plan? But there's something else about this plan that is important to understand. What emerged the next day are two diametrically opposed narratives, two histories that are the absolute opposite of each other cannot be bridged, cannot be brought together. And when we accept one, we reject the other. It is that extreme.